One of the first things which is required in the lab is to adjust the power supply to 15 volts. Never ever rely on the power supply readout because it's only an indication, it's an approximation perhaps. Sometimes it'll be right, sometimes it might be up by as much as 5%. When we wire the circuit up, the fuse always comes first in the circuit. The fuse comes before the switch, and then after the fuse comes the current meter, and then after the current meter came the 68 ohm resistor, and then after the 68 ohm resistor came the 100 ohm resistor, and then that leg went back to the power supply. i just move some of that clutter away. So let's just spread out there. We can see the, the whole lot. The current meter is not plugged in at the moment. Let's plug the current meter in. And the current meter is reading 90 milliamps approximately. You can see here we're on the uh, 300 milliamps DC range. And that means multiplied by 10 that's going to be 300 250, 200, 150, 100, we're 10 milliamps underneath the 100. In fact, mathematically it works out to, um, using Ohm's law, dividing the 15 volts by the 168 ohms that we've got, 100 ohms, 68 ohms, and that gives us 89 milliamps. So let's round it up to about 90 milliamps, and that's what the meter is showing, and that's, that's really good. The first thing in the lab asks us to fill in some information in a box. Uh, it says measure the voltage across the 100 ohm resistor. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll get the meter and uh, we'll measure the voltage across the 100 ohm resistor. I do that by getting the multimeter leads and putting them into the 100 ohm resistor. And then notice on the meter it says 8.52 volts but it's got a negative sign in front. By the way, I'm using the 20 volt DC range. Now, the deal with the negative symbol, a lot of students ask me about that. This is a digital multimeter and it can read, it, it, it can read regardless of the polarity of the leads. Now, with a voltmeter, the positive lead should always go towards the most positive side of the circuit. So, in fact, I had those leads backwards. I'll just put them around the right way and uh, to make the meter happy. There's positive going to the most positive side of the, the circuit and negative going to the negative side of the circuit and now the meter is reading 8.52 volts. If we ignore the sign and we just think about the, the voltage that was asked for, 8.52 volts is fine. So we write that value down. eight point five two volts. The second part of the lab asks us to measure the voltage across the sixty eight ohm resistor. Let's go ahead and do that. Sixty eight ohm resistor we've got six point zero six volts. So I'll write that into the appropriate box here.
volts. Check the maths. Does it work? Let's think about what that means, checking the maths. Well, we run the maths, and on the 68 ohm resistor, it works out to be 6.12 volts. Again, on the 100 ohm resistor, it gave us 9 volts. So we have to go ahead and compare those values with what we measured. And we see, although we're close, 8.52 to 9, hmm, the two voltages added up to 14.58 volts. They're not equal. Why not? We learned in our very first lesson about current meters and about the fact that current meters are supposed to have extremely low internal resistance. Well, the fact is, this current meter has not got low internal resistance. It appears to have quite a high resistance, which is causing 400 millivolts to be dropped across it. And then if we take that into account when we do the mathematics, we have 8.52 volts plus the 6.06 .06 volts plus the 400 millivolts, which then gives us our 15 volts. So Kirchhoff's law still holds true. The next part of the lab requires that we adjust the supply voltage to the circuit from 15 volts up to 20 volts. All right, so now I'm, I'm measuring the uh, 68 ohm resistor voltage. Again, notice I've got the uh, leads around incorrectly there, but the meter will still read the right voltage. And I'm reading 8.0 volts across that. So we'll just go ahead and note that voltage. All right, I'll go across the uh, 100 ohm resistor now. And I'll put the leads around the right way with positive towards the more positive side of the circuit. And the meter is reading 11.34 volts. So we can write that down. Did the voltage increase or decrease? Did the two voltages add to equal the power supply voltage? Well, certainly the voltages are larger. Uh, now the, the voltage that um, we've got across each resistor has increased, we'll find, quite proportional to the um, increase in voltage that we gave the circuit. Let's go ahead and add those up then and see where we're at. Again, we find that the two voltages didn't add to the supply voltage of 20 volts. We found that we had 11.34 volts, 8.05 volts, added to 19.39 volts, and yet we had a supply voltage of 20 volts. So we're missing quite a bit. So in fact, we again come across looking for where that voltage drop is, and we find that we go across the current meter with the voltmeter, and uh, there we have it. 0.57 of a volt being lost across the internal resistance of the ammeter. Ammeters, of course, should have an extremely low resistance. Uh, this particular Hyoki ammeter uh, tends to have a little bit higher resistance than what would be desirable in our circuit today. So we take that 0 0.57 volts that we just measured across the ammeter add that to the two resistor voltages and we end up with 19.96 volts which we can call pretty well 20 volts and that's what we're after. In the last part of the lab you're required to check the new current with the higher voltage and then go ahead and turn the voltage down to 4 volts and from that point there's a chart that you have to complete you need to measure the new voltage across each resistor at 4 volts, 6 volts, 8 volts, 10 volts, etc. Once all of the voltages have been logged, you'll calculate the current going through each resistor with the applied voltage according to the chart. And after you've done that, you'll plot the values on the graph on the paperwork and then plot the graph.
And so that pretty well wraps it up for the, um, the lab with the... It's the first lab, in fact, that we do in a DC class, and it uses simply just two resistors, and we're checking to see if there's a linear increase in voltage and current for linear increases in supply voltage to the circuit. It also showed us that um, we have the voltage drops across each resistor, and the sum of those voltage drops add up, in fact, to, in our case, almost equal to supply voltage. If we do take into account the sum of all the voltage drops, which cover the voltage drop across the current meter as well, then of course Kirchhoff's law is satisfied, and the sum of the voltage drops in fact does add to the supply voltage. So please make sure you understand the prac. I think it was a valuable prac, and it's certainly uh, a prac that we will build on in the weeks to come.